Hey guys, this is Nick and in this video, I'm going to talk about the three ways that you can save a lot of money and these ways will not even impact your life at all or very minimally. The first big way to save a lot of money is by saving money on your taxes. That goes for your salary, your houses and your cars. Most people think there's not a lot of money to save on their taxes. What they're paying is what they think they have to pay. That's not always the case. So I'm going to show you now in this example. So most people think they have to make a lot of money to save a lot of money, but that's not always the case. And I'm going to show you in this table that I made up the two salaries. One is the case with a $50,000 a year salary and the other case is $100,000 a year. Let's start with the 50,000. If you live in New York, the taxes you would pay on a $50,000 salary would leave you with 39,489 after paying state and federal taxes. In Florida, where there is no state income tax, just by living in Florida, you're saving about $2,300 a year on taxes for that $50,000 salary. Now, I'm not saying you should move from New York to Florida just to save $2,300, but there are many states with zero state income tax, and so you should consider that as a long-term consideration. Now, taking that Florida case and adding the max 401k amount or IRA amount that you can do per year, 19500 if you put that away, your total take home between the 401k and your after-tax money would bump up to 44400 And what a lot of people don't realize is that most employers match up to like 5 or 6% of what you put in. So that's absolutely 100% free money. So even if you just put 5% of your salary, which is $2,500, your employer would match $2,500 uh, totally, 100%. That's $2,500 free, risk-free. You don't have to buy a stock. You don't have to invest in real estate. That's 100% gain right there for doing nothing. So the difference between living in New York and not doing a 401k or having a match is 39,000 versus 46,900 or a difference of $7,400 a year that you're putting in your pocket for doing nothing really different. And that comes out to $617 a month more that you're building up your net worth. In the same case, but using a $100,000 salary, the difference for New York with no 401k and Florida or no income state tax with employer match is 71 to 86 or $14,950 difference, which is like $1,245 a month, which is basically a free mortgage payment. Now, some people might say, well, I can't save $20,000 a year when I'm only making fifty. dollars uh, you don't have to do the whole 20. You can start off at 5%, 6%, 10% and work your way up and eventually get there if you keep doing the right things all the time. The second way to save on taxes is in housing. One, you should have a house uh, because you can write off the interest. But two, you can uh, sell the house and have a tax-free gain if you live in the house two years within the last five years that you owned it before you sold it and that's up to $250,000 in gain for a single person and half a million dollars for a married couple. So if you're looking to move out of your house, make sure you live there in the last two years of the five-year period so that you don't pay tax on that gain. All that kind of money adds up. And the third biggest tax that a lot of people spend is on new cars. And so every time you buy a new car, you're paying the state the state sales tax and if a car is 30 grand and you're paying seven percent uh, sales tax that's twenty one hundred dollars if you're buying a new car every three or five years you know that's five six thousand dollars every ten years or so a better way to go is a quality used car because one you get more usage out of it for the price you pay and number two and even better you're not paying the state income tax for a high price $30,000 car, you're paying it for say a $10,000 car or something like that, a lot lower tax. So all that money that you save on taxes goes directly into your pocket. The second biggest way you can save money is by avoiding interest and bank fees and late fees and those kinds of things. 
Now, everybody talks about saving money by not spending the $5 on the proverbial Starbucks coffee or whatever. But imagine if you went to Starbucks and you ordered that $5 coffee and you asked them, how much is it? And they told you that depends on when you plan on paying for it. What I mean by that is, let's say you take that $5 cup of coffee and put it on your credit card, add it to your revolving balance every month that you haven't paid off in full. And so let's say it takes you five years to completely pay that off or along with the other things you buy, you run a balance all the time. That $5 at your usual 20% annual credit card rate over five years becomes $12.44. Over 10 years, it becomes almost $31. Now, not many people have a $5 balance, more like, let's say, $1,000. Well, if you keep an average balance of like $1,000 on your credit card at your 20% rate over a 10-year period, you're paying $6,000 total for that original $1,000 in purchases. That's not the right way to buy things uh, because especially since the things you're buying are going down in value while the balance of what you paid is actually going up in value. So most people with some financial sense wouldn't think about going to one of those stores like Rena Center to rent their furniture or a big screen TV or a laptop or something like that. But that's actually what you're doing when you're buying things on your credit card and keeping a balance over the years so if you buy that furniture for a thousand dollars and you don't pay it off for a number of years and add to that the other things the tvs the trips whatever <laughs> the price you paid for those things are actually increasing while the value of those things are constantly decreasing so if you have to put that thousand dollar iphone on your credit card to pay it off over a year or two or three years even uh, even if it's a payment plan from the cell phone carrier, whatever, you can't afford it, okay? So go buy that $200 Xiaomi or Motorola phone instead and pocket the extra difference of the $800 plus the interest that you're not gonna pay by carrying it for two, three years. That goes for other things as well. You see these furniture places say six months, no interest, but what they don't tell you is after six months, you pay the interest for the last six months that was accruing, all kinds of things like that. So if you have to uh, buy these things on installment, you really can't afford it. And so go to Ikea instead, or even better yet, go to Craigslist and buy some furniture temporarily until you get your money straight and that you can go and buy furniture outright or that cell phone outright or that TV outright. Um, if you have to put a 65 inch uh, TV on your credit card and pay it off over three years, guess what? Go buy a 40-inch TV at Walmart for like $200 and save the difference and invest that difference. Looking at this website, Smart Asset, uh, it's all about finance, but they show outstanding credit card debt is like a trillion dollars. And what is really interesting down here is that the late payment rates in these cities are like 20 percent so that means that like one out of five people either the same 20 percent every month or a different person every month out of five people is making a late payment on their credit cards which means those credit card companies are getting late fees plus extra interest and all kinds of stuff that goes for banks too with their overdraft protection um, that they're always dinging you with so bank and credit card fees are complete wastes. You don't get anything for it. At least if you go buy uh, a $50 steak dinner, you got something. It might be a waste of money. Maybe you can't afford it. At least you got something. But paying overdraft fees, late fees, and all that kind of stuff, uh, parking tickets even, anything like that, that doesn't add anything to your life but just takes money from you for no reason. Uh, if that happens to you a lot, you need to get your money straight first in your bank account so that you have a buffer there so that you're never getting hit with insufficient fund fees or anything like that. Same with your credit cards. If you find that you can't pay off your credit card every month, you're spending too much money or you're not making enough money or both. Uh, fix that first 
so that you're not throwing money out the window, giving it to these banks that are making billions of dollars a year just on stupid fees. And the third way to save a lot of money is not to buy insurance because it is a ripoff. And so I, what I don't mean don't insure your house or don't insure your car. I mean all the other types of insurance. Basically, what it comes down to is if losing something will be financially catastrophic for you, then yes, buy insurance. But if not, then don't buy insurance just because of the fear that they push to get you to buy it. And those types of insurance that I'm talking about are things like people that have insurance for their tires on their car or their rims or uh, their cell phone in case it breaks or uh, travel insurance that if you buy a ticket in case you need to cancel or something like that, you pay uh, 30, 40% of the price of the ticket for that insurance because most of the times there's so much fine print that you're not even covered. And a lot of people found that out with the recent shutdowns uh, when they, canceled their travel plans they thought they had insurance and they found out that there's some fine print that says you're not covered for pandemics or some known event or whatever there's always a fine print to weasel their way out of these things so even if you think you're covered you're not in most cases i mean you see here the guardian article saying uh travel insurance policies not paying out in a crisis surprise surprise right you may not think it's a lot, but these things add up. Um, JetBlue wanted to charge me $17 when I was buying a ticket that I got with 7,000 points. Okay, it's a small amount, but these things add up. It's so prevalent that even buying something on eBay for like $11, they want to charge you <laughs> two-year protection plan from Square Trade for $399. Okay, that's 25% of the actual item just to get insurance for it. No thanks. <laughs> and here the most ridiculous one is the Domino's carry out insurance for your pie. If it falls, it's rained, uh, your dog licked it, your kid sat on it or whatever, you're insured. Well, thank God for that, right? Now the Domino's thing is more of a marketing gimmick than anything, but think about that. If you have to insure your pizza, you can't afford it, stay home and eat a sandwich. That goes for your cell phone. If your cell phone is so expensive that if it breaks, uh, you're gonna be in a financial uh, bind, then buy a cheaper cell phone. If the wheels on your car are so expensive or they get dented so easily, buy, <laughs> buy a used car that you don't have to worry about. And speaking of used cars, when you buy a used car, usually you could forego the collision, theft, and all those kinds of things that add to your insurance bill because the car value is a lot lower. And so you kind of self-insure yourself. And most big companies actually self-insure themselves because they don't want to pay the insurance. So big companies like uh, telecom companies and stuff, they insure their own trucks and things like that because they know that there's so much money in insurance, they could do it cheaper on their own. Now, a way to get around paying for that extra warranty is that a lot of credit cards double the warranty of the thing you buy if you use their card to buy it. So most electronics and things come with a one-year warranty. If you buy those things with these credit cards, you now have a two-year warranty. And usually that's good enough. If the thing doesn't break in two years, usually it's not gonna break or there's a newer, better version that you're gonna be changing to any, anyway in two years. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, I can't do all of those things. Uh, you don't have to do all of them. You can do some of them. You can do some of them up to a certain extent. Maybe you don't wanna buy your furniture off of Craigslist, go buy it from Ikea. Maybe you don't wanna put 20 grand away on your 401k, at least put up enough for the company match, things like that. But all of these together will really snowball and increase your net worth which you can then take and invest in other things like stocks, real estate, starting a business, anything like that. So if you're wondering how to save money and stop wasting your money on things that make you poorer, this is how you do it. I hope you learned something from this video and if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment on ways that you use now to save money. As always, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.